in the back. She's saving you go to the environment at the back. There is. Okay. With that, I'll, I'll move the recommendation. Oh, no. I want to speak, Councillor. Oh, so. You want to speak? Yes, please, Mr. Chairman. Correct. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I have some concerns about this, um, and I'm aware of the trends, the political trends within the council and the council administration. Uh, not just necessary around the council table. Um, but this, we are talking about an environmental natural heritage grant program, not a, a social heritage or a cultural heritage or an ethnic heritage. And this program or these criteria muddle these things up. Um, I, this is a modest enough program, but it is dedicated to the regional environment. Instead, we've got um, th that being hijacked to talk about empowering mana whenua and, and regarding co-management of natural resources. That's a political agenda. It may, you know, it may be a worthy agenda for, for one part of the community to demand co-management. That's another debate. Um, however, it, it should not be involved in a natural heritage grant program, which is really to assist the volunteers of all ethnic um, backgrounds who do a lot of work out there, it's, it's to empower them to help protect our natural heritage, our natural heritage, heritage that goes back 70 million, 80 million, 100 million years, not just motion. several hundred years when different groups arrived here. I think, I think we have to oppose that, Mr Chairman, and remove the bit about empowering mana whenua. That's about politics, and also the, the bit about co-management um, of natural resources. Well, that is not helpful. OK, Councillor Lee, okay, if just you want to um, move to that, I'll move. I'm going to put the motion on the floor. Is there a seconder for the motion? Yeah. Yep. Oh. Councillor Philippina. So it's on the floor now. It looks like we've we've jumped it. Councillor Cashmore, have you got a? I just had a, a question, sir, on on the actual policy. Where have I got it here now? So it's uh, page 25, and it's to do with the eligibility. And we're saying here that projects can be undertaken by public, private, or on Maori land. Don't have a problem with any of that. Is, is there any hierarchical order of that, or is the hierarchical order of allocating the grants purely based? upon the outcomes that are going to be delivered from that grant? Um, yeah, the, um, the assessment of applications is based on the outcomes the project would support. And if I further, Mr Chair, what is the ongoing, um, I guess, checks or audit of that, that those things have actually been delivered and are continually yeah. to be um, maintained and managed for which the grant was allocated? Um, so as part of the contestable funding process, we have a range of... Um, accountability requirements for all grant recipients. Um, they are required to provide um, receipts for um, use of all grant funding, and then kind of photos and follow-up site visits are taken, particularly for our larger grants. Okay, and that goes on for a number of years post the re Thank you, Mr. Chair. Councillor Wayne Walker. Sure. I just want to endorse the comments that Councillor Lee is making, um, and particularly it goes to co-management. And if, and in particular, if that co-management uh, is is 50-50 or the like, um, when um, we've got our backs to the wall on funding, if we take the um, example of carry dieback, Doc, Doc is dropping the ball. They're reducing their um, funding, funding generally that's available from uh, other sources outside of council is dropping um, through Lotto through a range of areas. So I come back to this issue of um, co-management and costs and what council can do. And if we look at the impact of that across council, across hearings, across projects, across issues like this, <coughs> what you see is massive increases in the costs and less cost that actually is going to where it needs to be, which is the work on the ground. And that is my concern. This is another example of it. And we really need some analysis of this openly and transparently so we've got a handle on what's actually going on. In the Haraki Gulf Forum, we've got a proposed change in the governance, the co-governance. 
We're which not about no. the is of great the concern no. and will add considerably to cost. Get to the, um, <laughs> the issue at hand, please. The issue is about these evaluative criteria and, frankly, the costs that we're going to have involving more people and especially more iwi in the decision-making process. Thank you. And, uh, the Deputy Question? Mayor, did you wish to make a comment? Oh, on? Mr Chair, I, I, I don't know where to start with this. Surely, am I completely missing the point, but if we partner with iwi and with the the support for Māori outcomes, surely that's the opportunity that we would have to work with iwi organisations with their own money and their own passion for stewardship of the natural environment and actually use the opportunity to double the, the small and paltry amount of money that, that we have available for this. I, I think there's a, a complete missing of the point here, yeah. that this is all about trying to grow the putia that we've got by sharing the, the job with the community. Thank you. Councillor Webster. Yes, thank you. Um, look, I support this. Um, I have seen, and there was a, I wish I'd brought it in, there was a lovely story on the front of um, a, a local paper recently about some farmers who had actually got a grant mm -hmm. and fenced off bush, which they do in many areas of Auckland. Um, that's why you can look out the window and see some amazing <coughs> bush and if you drive through the countryside and often fencing is one of the issues that is quite expensive um, and getting more expensive and when you see some of the waterways and the bush blocks that have been fenced off with help, not totally council but with help and that's the public-private partnerships that we're getting. And, you know, in the recent um, Balance Environment Awards that were won by uh, the Helensville couple, the amount of fencing that they'd done of bush blocks, and yes, some of that probably did come from council, but that's what we're after. And it's all to do with um, sustainable living. And it says here, there's clear evidence that the project will motivate and empower Aucklanders to adopt more environmentally sustainable lifestyles and um, I, I can't see why councils wouldn't uh, support this. Councillor Fletcher. Mr <coughs> Chairman, I, I think in, in the discussion, um, I would like some guidance from Dean Kimpton here, because what, Dean, you are hearing is a desire that, in terms of biodiversity, that that is going to be the primary driver in the analysis, I, I totally concur with Councillor Webster. I mean, the future is going to be about partnerships. Um, so if you look at page 23, um, we are putting a lot more weighting on mana whenua in terms of their role as kaitiaki. That, that is all really laudable. I am, I am not disputing um, their role, but what... I am wanting assurances on because it is such a paltry sum when we are trying to consider what we, you know, the scale of this whole region. I want to see the primary weighting being on outcomes. So is there some guidance you can give me that gives me comfort in voting for this, that we could have um, some additional words in the, the adoption of this framework that, that actually gives the belts and braces assurance that it will be outcomes focused. Sorry, Mr. Chair, can I just mention something from the table? Mm. It says the, the Maori outcomes weighting is 10%. Mm. So, I, yes. uh, thank you for that. I was, uh, I was looking at table two, which is how you've sought to allocate weighting based on <laughs> different outcome criteria and there's 10% weighting there, Councillor Fletcher. So that, that is the weighting that is I understand, given. I understand that, but, but I you're think... You're wanting something else. <coughs> I maybe um, um, alignment with strategic priorities um, was 40% in the past, um, applicants' capacity 20% in the past. You know, Maybe we could change some of those weightings around... I, I just know the challenge that it is to, 
to be trying to get some of those funds and grow those funds and um, I, I want and it's a difficult conversation to have because I, I don't want to um, in, e in any way denigrate um, the objectives of the council in, in the work that we are doing with mana whenua but we do need to be explicit, absolutely explicit in the boundaries that we're setting for that so that there can be good relationships into the future. I'm, I'm lacking the wisdom of Solomon right now in terms <laughs> of how to provide the guidance that you seek. Um, I, I, uh, we have the regional significance criteria, which is on table one. So it's against <coughs> those criteria that any proposal is considered. Do they achieve those significance criteria? Um, I, I think we're wise to try and remember that um, in the role of, in, in, as kaitiaki, the outcomes are looking to achieve are in many cases common with what we're trying to achieve um, as uh, more broadly. And the criteria um, against which they're assessed in table two I mean, short of reallocating the assessment criteria and focusing it perhaps back on what we had in the old criteria, but acknowledging that we want to come back and also test that it delivers on uh, Maori outcomes and maybe one or two others, I'm not sure how you handle this issue. You either take away the weighting criteria exactly. and leave it there as... Exactly and we want you to acknowledge or demonstrate how you'll deliver on these outcomes, um, but have no waiting on them, or you have a waiting on it. And I, I, that's my somewhat unhelpful advice. I think you're e going to end up debating percentages mm. if we continue down this track. Yep. Oh, well, I don't want to delay the, the time of the committee today, but I would just say to officers that for the future, when we're pulling these sorts of, of weightings together, that we endeavour as best we can. Um, I, I am, I am really interested that that we can deliver a lot more in this sector, and I'm uncomfortable at times with um, our inability to do so. Um, thank you. Uh, Councillor Lee, you're, it's, this is on the floor, it's been moved and seconded, now you've come up with an amendment. Your amendment is... It is to uh, outcome six, Mr Chairman, and my amendment would read, mana whenua are enabled, respected and recognised in their customary kaitiaki role over natural resources. It takes out the word empowered and participate in co-management, which is, are essentially political um, aspects and not really much to do with protecting the natural environment and natural heritage. But the role is acknowledged. So, okay, Councillor Lee's put this up as an amendment. So, um, yes. through the Chair, um, that outcome um, is taken from the Community Grants Policy um, adopted by Council in December 2000. Um, well, that's, okay. that's community order. development is a little different from natural heritage, okay. and okay. that's order, the, order, exactly Council. my order, point. Order, order. Well, that's I'm a policy. now if any member of the committee wishes to second Council, yep. Councillor Watson wishes to second it. Um, I don't think there's probably need from any debate on this. Um, no, no, no. No. So, oh, totally disagree. It's, it's Chair, so, so, sorry, Chair, I, I, I totally disagree with, with, with C, especially after the advice that we've received. Obviously, it's just another way of Māori bashing. Oh, oh, um, oh, 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 o
Councillor Fletcher, oh, so, so, that. Sorry, sorry, Chair. Look, no, that's no, my. No. Hold on, Chair. Let me finish. That's my impression in regards to this. After what staff have said around the policy, it's a policy. It's worded in there. So, what is the only reason around getting rid of what's in our policy that the council has <laughs> adopted, Chair?